All right, welcome to another Creative TV production. In this particular video, we are going to be covering how to get a little more advanced with our uh, effects maps. Um, and in this case, what we are going to do is we're actually going to start to use functions to control the parameters of the different quadrants um, that we've made in the past. All right, this will actually allow us to start to create our own custom noises and our own custom patterns. All right, so basically, um, as in the last video, all we need to do is drop down an effects map to start the process. Um, and then you can right click on it and say edit effects map, or you can use control E. All right. Now, what I want to do um, just to start to, exp to um, visualize or explain this, this process, what I want to do is actually drop down quite a few different quadrant nodes, right, because I actually want to subdivide this quite a bit, all right, before I actually start to use the pattern in the shape, all right. I don't want to have, I don't actually want to have any patterns in any of these nodes right here because these patterns basically are a little too big for my noise. I might turn on a couple of them, but I, I always, when I'm first prototyping a noise, I like to start out with, uh, you know, four or five different quadrant nodes just so I have a nice amount of patterns to use. Alright, so um, what I also need to do uh, to begin with is I'm going to set color mode to false and just set my auto max level. That way I get the full brightness of my uh, effects map or of my colors in my effects map. Okay. So what I'm going to do inside of uh, this last quadrant node is I'm going to turn on um, the paraboloid. Alright, so you can see we have quite a few paraboloids in here that we can start to use. And uh, what I'm going to do first is just show how, just really simply, how you can actually start to create um, randomization um, amongst all these paraboloids. Like you, you don't, ba you basically don't have to have these in rows and columns like this. Um, the effects map actually allows you to control all these with the uh, dynamic functions, which we've seen before in uh, the Podracer um, tutorial series. But it, we've never really done it with effects maps, and you can actually achieve a ton more effects um, inside of the actual effects map itself too. And basically this is how um, these are created, the, the noises in the base elements here. If you look at all these, you know, these are all just a lot of quadrant nodes and a lot of dynamic functions to create these different um, noises here. So it's pretty simple. All right, at least most of these start out as effects maps, right? They do a lot of processing. Um, to the actual effects map after the fact uh, in a standard um, substance graph to achieve something like um, this cells for here. But let's just go over the basics, not get too crazy just yet. So let's let's actually add, uh, what I want to do is I want to add some randomization to the offset of uh, these um, paraboloids in here. So what I'm going to do is come over to the pattern offset and I'm going to add an empty function and I'm just going to click on the empty function right there so I can get into the function editor and what we can do is uh, algorithms actually provided us with a whole bunch of um, base functions and for this video series we're just going to utilize the random functions over here and most likely mostly we're going to use the uniform negative one to one and the uniform a to b um, we'll get into these more advanced ones later but this will just illustrate this process All right. so what I'm going to do is uh, drag out the uniform a to b now what this is going to do, you can see in the description right here, it says this function returns a floating random value between value A and value B. So what we can do is we can actually set up two constants like this. All right, so we can actually say if, uh, well, we can, we can actually just say, you know, if you are number two paraboloid, you know, your offset's going to be over here somewhere or down here somewhere, right? Uh, always um, keeping in mind that this is a zero to one um, ratio here is zero and one one or zero zero and one one if you will all right so I'm just going to plug these guys together here and uh, this guy is going to be zero and let's just say this guy is let's just put in 0.5 just for now just so we can see the effects <clears throat> and if you notice the pattern offset if we actually clear this actually let me copy this really quick so I don't lose it. So if if we clear this empty function here, you'll notice that it's an X and Y, which tells you that you need to actually have a vector 2 for your output. Okay, so let's put this, so just, we'll just remember that. 
I'll paste my notes back in. Oh, I didn't copy them. Alright, let's we'll set that up again. Alright. So, put those in there. Alright, so then we'll say 0, and we'll say 0.5. And then for here, what we can do is put a vector 2. And just take the output of our random number and put it into uh, the float 2. Uh, you can also set it up so that these guys are different, right? So you can have two of these guys here. And you can probably just reutilize the zero so you don't need an extra node there. And you can just say this is one. And then you set the vector two as the output node, and there you go. You'll notice now the paraboloids are scattered over the, the image. Okay, and you actually and you have full control over where they go. So you can actually take these guys and you can start to build up patterns. In this case, just noise. Because it's all random. Right, so you can go and edit these guys all you want until you get a shape you like. And that's fine for now, and I'm not really trying to make anything in particular for this guy. So, what I also want to do, something that's very important for uh, noise, is to change the size based off of a random function. So I'm going to add an, another empty function to our pattern size. And in here we're going to just do the same thing. And what you can actually do is you can just copy this by hitting Control C. Let's do that. And then Control V. And there you go. And then you can set this as output node. And you'll notice now we have something really weird. So we can actually put these guys up to something a little bit, little bit bigger, right? Because we can go to like 4. Maybe this is 2. We'll just see. So there you go. Now we're starting to get something um, pretty interesting. So you can see the flexibility here. And what I'm going to do is actually just feed in the same value so we actually get a circle. So there you go. Something a little more like a star field. So you can play around with those sizes and start to, to adjust the min and max values for those sizes. Like so. All right, so we'll just kill that. So now we actually have, if we go back here, we have a, a random function for our offset and our size, and that's giving us a nice random looking image. The nice thing about this is now we can actually copy this one node and it copies the, the functions with it. So what we can do now is we can take this and add another subdivision level to our noise. And there you go, now we're starting to build up some noise. And what we can do is go into these guys and I can change my size and change my values a little bit like that. Let's go into the offset. Let me start playing around with these values. Just start giving uh, different effects. All right, so let's subdivide it one more time. And that is how you build up noises. Pretty simple. Another reason why uh, substance is very powerful. You can't do this type of thing in, in Photoshop. And if you wanted to do it in something like Unity or um, uh, or Unreal um, or like Maya, like you would have to actually program in your own Perlin uh, noises or your own actual functions that would actually write to a texture. Um, gets the math gets pretty complicated, but definitely not out of the realm of you know possi possibility. But you can definitely do it and try it. Um, but it's obviously much more fun to uh, just prototype these types of noises with uh, nodes inside of Substance. So I'm going to play with some of these values here. Let's see what else we get. I'm just going to try to fine tune this noise a little bit. Now, what we can do is I also want to kind of fill in maybe some of these areas here with some larger uh, colors. So what I'm going to do is actually put a pattern in one of the top uh, nodes here. And I'm going to actually add empty functions, just some random functions in both of these as well. And since these are larger, they'll, they'll basically tint some of these darker black areas just to kind of give a nice even noise. So we can do this, and this is where we can actually use the negative one to one. So the negative one to one will 
like it says, it returns a floating random value between negative 1 and 1. So it's a really quick way to just get something working. So we can just do a vector float 2 and just feed this in here. Set this as the output node. And you can see how it shifted there. And if we go back to this guy, we go to the pattern size. Now I always use the A to B, uniform A to B function for um, things like the uh, the size because if it's a negative number then obviously we're not going to be able to see it. So um, I always put the uniform A to B on the, the size. So let's do a constant float. We'll do one and then we'll do a vector two. Set that as output. And let's actually put this up to something like three. There you go. So now you can see that we have some nice variation. So that's how you do that. And basically at this point, um, you now have a noise. So you can do things like go into a add it to a gradient map and one of the cool things actually um, I like to do is I, I will actually um, just type in gradient um, inside of Google just if I want to get find some interesting cool gradients but one thing that Substance allows you to do is if you go in the gradient editor and you do pick gradient and then I switch to uh, these gradient swatches here what I can do is actually click and drag over this gradient here and it will build me that gradient inside of uh, Substance. So now if we click on this, you can see we have some pretty interesting uh, looking effects here. And then you can run that through a HSL. Maybe play with the saturation. Um, the hue. Get some interesting effects. You can do something like maybe a skin burn with this. You know, because you can actually then take an emboss like that and then feed in the effects map to the bottom of this. Now we actually have the embossing of that. So you can, you can get some really interesting, weird effects going with this. And then if we actually put this to an output node here, and this becomes our diffuse. There you go. And you can also run this through a normal mapper. So let's do that. Alright, so let's feed this into the normal map. I'm going to do a channel shuffle and a uniform color. Feed that in. That's good. I'll do input to alpha. It should have a normal map for me. That's weird. Nope. Nope. What am I missing here? Oh, I put in the blue channel, not the alpha channel. There you go. All right, so we got the normal map for that. Let's change the intensity on that a bit. That's looking pretty cool. Again, something that uh, you know take a bit of time to create uh, inside of Photoshop. Even though the Endu 2 um, plugin is pretty useful, it still needs this noise input. It would need this noise input to actually produce this normal map for us, and we're getting a nice organic looking almost a terrainy looking surface from our actual effects map. So then we'll do uh, output node <clears throat> and this will be our normal. Alright, so now we can uh, view our outputs. Let me change my shader here. View output compute nodes and view outputs. There you go. There's our 3D view and let's take a look at this. Uh, and then we also need to um, change, so inside the shader itself, oh, that should be fine. I thought the relief mapping was on. So there you go. Some interesting ways to use uh, effects maps and just a little bit more of an advanced look into what we can do to create our own noises, our own custom effects maps. Anyways, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email me at uh, KennyL at CreativeTD.com or visit the website at creativetd.com. Thanks so much. Bye.